Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. How y'all doing? Facebook Live, how y'all doing? Wait for some people to get on. My phone keep ringing. Sorry about that. Good afternoon. Facebook Live. Invite some followers. Invite some people. Invite some people. Amen. Amen. Invite some people. Invite some people, praise God. Glory, glory, glory. How y'all doing today? I'm going to wait for some more people to get on and then we're going to get straight into it. Invite your friends, invite your people. Hallelujah. Hey, prophet, I finally caught you. Amen. Glad. I finally caught you too. Amen. I haven't got on here in a long time for the public. Now I only do my Facebook Live for my people, my uh, students in the school. Amen. How you doing, Apostle, Apostle Witter? How you doing? Praise God. Miss Bosley, how you doing? Amen. Praise God. Well, today I'm going to talk to y'all about um, the one-on-one -on -one with the prophets uh, movement that's been taking place. Um, we've been having a lot of people coming to the one-on-one -on -one with the prophets in the last few months. And, and it's been phenomenal. So many different people have been getting touched by God uh, in a powerful way. So, you know, we're excited about what the Lord is doing. The next one is December the 9th through the 11th in Houston, Texas. So I would urge that everybody come out, even, even, she said Marcus. Yes, Marcus. So even when, um, you know, y'all need to come out, whether you're in Mississippi, Louisiana, Wherever, if you close by, you need to come. We have uh, Prophet Bernard Taylor, which is one of my uh, spiritual uh, brothers in the faith. He's coming from Ghana. And, I mean, prophetic sharpshooter, prophetic accuracy in the prophetic. So you need to come and uh, be a part of that. Amen. When are you coming to Atlanta? As soon as y'all invite me out to Atlanta. Amen. Inbox me. I will be there. We can work the details out. Amen. 2017 has been getting real filled up, so please, let's connect. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, Ms. Grant? I need to talk to you. We need to, we need to talk about that old situation we had, see if that's still available. Where, where will you be? This is going to be in Houston, Texas. 6300 West Park Drive, Houston, Texas. Zip code is 77057. It's going to be Sue 310. So you need to come and you need to be a part of the movement. God has been moving in a powerful way during these meetings. Again, I believe in this season, prophet, God is con con you know, connecting the eagles together. So we all need to gather together. Um, 
and you know and, and collaborate yes yes miss grant please do call me uh how you doing how you doing how you doing major prophet jeremiah we need to talk man of god we need to collaborate we need to talk it's been a long time coming but we've been having these one-on-one -on -one with the prophets and the power of god been so uh powerful uh prophet god is telling me that in this season prophets are gathering together there's no more jealousy amongst each other no more uh, uh schisms in the camp uh, there's prophetic alignment that's taking place in the season. Uh, we need apostolic and prophetic collaborations. We need apostles and prophets working together because we are the foundational offices. We are the foundational people. So we must come together. Uh, how you doing, Pastor Jim? God bless you. We must come together as a unit and really see God move in a powerful way um, with us, with our people, and, and come together, especially the prophets, because simple fact is the Lord wants to allow the eagles to feed off of one another. Amen. Whenever there was a shedding of, of, of wings with the eagles, another eagle would take that person's place, a place until their wings were fully shedded for the, the, the renewing of the youth of that eagle. Amen. So we need to collaborate together as a unit and come together as eagles. The lions and the eagles need to fly to get, need to roll together. Amen. The, um, even with the apostolic movement, uh, even Paul with his apostolic movement, he still needed a prophet in his ears to give direction. So even during the apostolic reformation that's taking place, there's also a prophetic reformation that's there to, uh, help push the apostolic reformation that's taking place. Amen. So this is the reason why God, uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. Of God. Let's talk soon. Hallelujah. Let's find a, a right venue and let's make it happen. Captain. Amen. We can collaborate. Uh, you know why God wants us to all collaborate, um, ministries. There's a, there's an individual, vision that we all have in our own individual ministries, but there's also a corporate vision that we need to come together on because yes, I can bring 10,000 a flight by myself. I'm pretty sure prophet Jeremiah can bring 10,000 by himself, a uh, thousand or whatever, whatever how the scriptures say, but I know together we can do even more so, you know, and not about numbers, but by of uh, the weight of uh, the weight of glory, by the power and 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 the uh, the effect of the city, amen. And I believe that God is not trying to build a church; He's trying to build a movement. And within that movement, He's going to build His church. So I believe that as we come together as a unit, yes, it's not taken away from our individual uh, missions, but I believe as we collaborate. Um, we can feed off of one another the glory of God. I believe that it will boost our ministries even to a higher plane. Amen. Uh, just by me collaborating with some of my um, African brothers lately, um, even my ministry within itself, a, a certain weight has, has came upon my ministry uh, since I've been collaborating with these brothers. Amen. So, you know, even with my spiritual father, Prophet Passion, since the collaboration with my spiritual father, you know, my ministry for the weight of glory has increased. Amen. Uh, yes, we had miracles. We had prophecy and all that before. But now it's at a different, it's in, it's, it's in a different plane now. Amen. So this is the reason why eagles must come together as a unit. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we are kingdom building. The fivefold. Yes, exactly. Hallelujah. And so, you know, the thing is, together, we can see even greater. Paul even needed a prophet to tell him when he didn't take heed to the prophet, when he didn't listen to the other uh, officer in the fivefold, his street ministry ended and his jail ministry began. Now, Paul was one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. However, because he didn't want to take ear to another man, another officer that's in the faith, that hears from God just as well as he do, his street ministry ended and his jail ministry began. So imagine how much further Paul would have went if he would allow himself to take heed to the prophetic voice uh, next to him. Amen. So even though that uh, officer may even outrank you, you got to look at the weight that's on the other officer's life. 
Amen. So this is the reason why we need the prophets to come together. We need the apostles to come together because th at the end of the day, we feed off of one another. Without the feeding off of one another, the whole fivefold is incomplete. Amen. We can't make a full fist if, if some of us are separated. Amen. So we need to collaborate in all areas of life. We need to combine our resources. We need to come because it doesn't take away from you, you connecting with another man of God or another woman of God, actually it, it shows your humility to someone else's gift. Amen. I know there are great men of God in Houston and abroad that have gifts that's different from mine. I'm not saying I'm the grandmaster chief of all prophets. No, there are other men of God that have um, great anointings or have a different anointing that can bring something different to the body of Christ. Amen. So, uh, this is what we need, you know, so this is the reason why we need to collaborate men and women of God coming together. So I believe that we will be able to see revival, revival in a, in a powerful way, not just survival, but revival. If we come together as a unit, uh, come together in unity amongst the brothers and sisters, we will see revival at a higher plane. Invite some of your followers. Amen. Uh, invite the followers so they can hear this or just replay it or share it whenever you get a chance. Amen. Um, but this is what I'm saying. We need to learn to collaborate. Amen. So much division. We see this going on in politics. We see this going on in, with race. We see this going on with, in our communities. We see this between male and female. You know, um, you know, I said the other day when, you know, when I made the statement, of, you know, uh, about my views about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, um, a lot of people got upset with me because of my view, you know, but the thing is, is we shouldn't let certain, uh, different viewpoints, uh, distort our belief system in Christ or distort our friendship or love for one another as believers. Amen. Just because I have a certain candidate that I have in mind that, that I want to support, that doesn't mean that, um, I don't love God or I don't, you know, this and that, et cetera. And I go for both sides, amen, male and female, you know, black and white. You know, it, we must stop the foolishness. The spirit of division is the main cause of all this, amen. This was the same spirit that, that entered into Lucifer to make him separate his love for God, amen. So it, it's more than just pride. It's also the spirit of, of division. If he can divide us, he can conquer us. And he's been doing this for the longest. He he whispered that spirit of division in Eve's ear in the garden. Amen. To make her figure like, you know, that she can be separate from God and be higher than God. Whenever there's someone try to put the the the, 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 the uh, in your ear about any form of separation or division, run quickly. How you doing? How you doing, Latanya D? How you doing, woman of God? We must, you know, we must come together and stop letting the enemy beat us. So this is the reason why the prophets must come together. The apostles must come together. You know, the saints must come together. Churches, ch churches need to come together. If you know you don't have it at your church, connect with another church. Pastors are too prideful. Some pastors are too prideful to let prophets in their pulpits because they're afraid that they're going to lose members. First of all, a true prophet is not trying to be a pastor, so he's not going to take your members. People can follow him all day long, but at the end of the day, he's just a prophet. He's not a pastor. You know, that's your anointing. That's your, if, you're, if that's your anointing, if, if you know who you are as a pastor, you shouldn't be worried about where your people are going to go, if they're going to leave or not. You don't got to control them. If they really, truly faithful to, you know, to the mission or the vision that you have, it doesn't matter if they go, you know, connect or do this with other people, you know, um, but that test is their loyalty, not so much your authority. Amen. So this is what we got to look at. And plus, I mean, Hey, if it ain't in people to be faithful to you, they ain't going to be faithful to you. You know, people, if they ain't going to be loyal, they're not going to be loyal. Amen. So it, do, it doesn't matter if you are a, a, a prophet, a pastor, or apostle, we need to collaborate on a corporate level. You know, reason why we have the one-on-one -on -one with the prophets is because so many people don't have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a prophet. They got to go through 15 alma bearers. They got to go through all this protocol. They got to, you know, call this one, call my secretary, make an appointment, do this, do that. I'm, I do my best to try to be personal with my people. Uh, not, not to the point of familiarity, but try to be personal with my people as much as I can so they can have that one-on-one -on -one 
uh, with the prophet. Amen. And this is what we want to do. We want people to really see God, hear God and connect with men of God and see that, hey, we're human, but we're divine at the same time. Amen. So we need to be able to collaborate with one another, help uh, form some type of alliance with each other. You know, so many churches are divided. We need to break the spirit of division. It's not helping us at all. Amen. Bless you. Bless you, Mars. How you doing, man of God? Praise God. So we need to collaborate on, on, you know, together as a unit. Amen. There's more power in unity than it is in division. You know, the enemy has been tricking us for the longest and we need to, we need to wake up and, and smell a Shinola. We need to wake up and smell a coffee. The devil is a liar. Amen. So I love all my brothers and sisters. I love all my apostles and prophets that are out there on the forefront doing the work of God. We may not agree in everything. We may not even agree in certain doctrine, but at the end of the day, we on the same team. We work for the same boss. We have the same father. So we need to come together, man. It, you know, we all have different anointings. You can't knock the next man anointing because it's different from yours. You can't say, oh, it ain't God because he he, he preach on prosperity and you preach on, on, on faith. Or he preach on faith and you preach on on the glory or the anointing. It don't mean that y'all that they false or they, they they don't have the right doctrine. It's just you that's their revelation. That's their portion. That's their anointing. Amen. So we work for the same team. We have different facets in the in the department of God. We all work at different departments in God. Amen. But you cannot knock the next man's um uh, uh power structure or power authority because it's different from yours. Amen. We must learn to collaborate. If we don't collaborate, we can't celebrate. Amen. Because at the end of the day, I tell people all the time, you need to like me now. So if whoever ever out here that's listening and have a problem with me, if you don't like me now, how you gonna how you gonna be able to connect with me when we in heaven? Amen. God will fix it to where He'll make my mansion be right next to yours, and you gotta spend eternity looking in my face. Amen. Knowing that you was rude to me down there on earth. That's if you make it in. But he'll fix it to where my man should be bigger than yours. And I'll be right there next to, next to you forever. And you got to look at this face every day. So why not collaborate now, connect now, show love now? Because that way we're going to have to, we're going to be stuck with each other forever. So we might as well get along down here as we're going to do in, on earth. Amen. So stop with the fake smiles and the phony hand gestures and the phony hugs and the phony this and phony. I hate phony people. Another thing I hate, I hate people that's, that's secret followers. They follow you in secret, but publicly they don't announce you before men. I tell my sons and daughters the same thing. You know, um, you know, don't sit up here and call me pops when we on the phone but then call me only apostle or prophet when, when when you're in public or when you're doing your scopes or when you when you do you you collaborate with people that lets you know you're a secret son, your secret daughter. Amen. So you got to be very careful with people motives and people agendas, amen. We got to learn how to be look, be be honest, be truthful. I ain't saying that you got to kiss up to man. But guess what? The Bible said is love your neighbor as you love yourself. The same respect that you want to do to you, you need to do that to another person. The same love, honor, and admiration that you want from others, you need to show that to another person. So if I had to kiss up to somebody, I'm going to kiss up. Because guess what? I want that same honor done unto me. Oh, y'all don't hear that. We sit up and play, oh, you don't kiss up to me. That's people with a rough heart. That's people with a hardened heart and they have trust issues and don't have love in their heart. So why not kiss up to somebody? I'm going to kiss up to my wife. When I first met my wife, I'm going to do whatever it takes to impress her. So why not impress the next person? Because it's pride. You have pride. You don't want to, you don't want to kiss up to somebody because you have pride. What's wrong with kissing up to somebody? You're showing that you have love. You're showing that you have honor. You're trying to impress them. The same thing with we trying to impress God. Amen. We must learn to go out of our way to bless others. The Bible said there's no greater love than a man willing to lay down his life for a friend. So that means you lay down your pride. 
You lay down your self, uh, self uh, esteem. You lay down all these different things, uh, uh, selfishness, all these things you lay to the side to f for that next person. So you shouldn't be worrying about if how this is going to look in front of people if I kiss up to this man or go. That's why in Africa, they see the they see a lot of power. When you get off the plane, they be like, how you doing, my bishop? They bow their head. How you doing, my prophet? How you, they'll get on their knees. When they approach the prophet, they get on their knees in submission. In America, oh, no, you can't get nobody to get on their knees. You can't get them to you can't get them to show no form of submission, no form of honor. But that's the reason why those men and women of God see more power. Because see, you cannot ask for all, but don't honor the vessel that the all is contained in. I'm gonna say that again. You cannot want the all, but don't light the vessel that the all is contained in. Because once the vessel is broken, it's no longer good. So why are we sitting up here playing games and don't show love to one another? We must honor the prophets in our lives. We must honor the apostles that's in our lives. Stop playing secret follower. Stop only giving kudos when you in when you're in private on the phone with them. Oh, you're a great man of God, apostle. Oh, you're a great man of God, prophet. You you my daddy, you my spiritual father. But then when you're around people, you're like, how you doing, Prophet Sean? How you doing, Apostle? Why ain't dad now? Why ain't Papa now? Come on now. That's false humility. That's false. That's false honor. That's false honor. That goes for people who follow you. That go for spiritual sons and daughters. They even go for your children. Why sit up here and have this false honor? You call me dad and oh, you the best thing ever happened in my life since sliced bread. <laughs> but then as soon as you're in public in front of other apostles that you have given the same honor to, now I'm just prophet. Now I'm just apostle. That's phony. Exactly. Woman of God. That's phony. That's false humility and that's false honor. Acting like they don't know you. Exactly. Exactly. Apostle side. They act like they don't know you. You know what I'm saying? But they will talk about, they will, they will, they, they will play like they honor you and they'll know that they, they doing it wrong. They stutter with their words. They really can't get the word out of their mouth. We must learn to show love to one another. We must learn to honor one another. We must learn to give honor where honor is due, but even double honor to those who labor in the doctrine of faith. So that that means that you got to that mean you got to kiss up. Oh my God! I hate people. I hate when people sit up here and play like it's something wrong with showing honor to man. We can love. We can be great sons and daughters to God, but be bad brothers and sisters to one another. I'm going to say that again. We can be great sons and daughters to God, but we are terrible brothers and sisters to one another. You can't say that you love God, but you don't love your brother who you see every day. How are you going to love an invisible force, but you can't love a, 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 a physical element of that force? That's crazy. How are you not going to love me, but you can love only God? You got to have favor with God and man. And that's the reason why some people ministries are stagnated. That's why some people ministries are stagnated because you only love God and you don't love man. Oh my God. Yes. You've been hurt by man. Yes. You've been rejected by man. Yes. You've been, yes. All that by man, but it's not about that. It's about love in spite of love without conditions. Love you whether you hurt me or you didn't. We got to break the spirit of offense. We got to break all these things. We got to stop this because see, without the love factor, your ministry can only go so far. I know some apostles and prophets that they, 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 they very powerful. They're, they're sound in doctrine, but they're rude to people. They don't smile. They're not approachable. They barely talk to people. They're very standoffish. You know, they're very dry in their character. That's not God, but you're an apostle. But you don't have patience with people. You're not trustworthy. You don't trust people. You are you know, that's not God. You don't have no fruits of the spirit, no good character, but you're an apostle or you're a prophet of God. That's not God, people of God. We got to learn to have the character, the fruit to go with the suit.
We got to have the fruit to go with the gift. How you are an apostle, but you stand office with people. You the sent one, not the stand office one. Come on now. We got to stop playing games. How you going to be an apostle, but you're not approachable? People don't like you. People don't talk to you. Or they'll talk to your spouse, but don't talk to you. Or they'll talk to your members, but don't talk to you. Why? It's something in you that's not right. You know? So we got to stop playing games like that. Always in a cage, separated, don't speak. Oh, that's just how they is. That's just their character. No, that's craziness. <laughs> you better get a Kool-Aid and a smile. Barely smile. Can't joke. Can't laugh. That's not God. You don't have to be serious all the time to claim that you have an office. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus didn't walk around with a boot in his mouth all day long. Amen. Jesus didn't walk around here acting, I am, I am the Christ, the son of the most high God. You better respect my mind. No, he didn't do that. Hitting agendas. Exactly. 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 So we have to have the love. You can't say you have love, but you don't have gentleness. That's another thing. Many people, they claim that they have the love and the love of God, but they're not gentle to people. They very abrupt in their words. They talk down on people. They speak with a with a with a with a rugged spirit. Their spirit is very brash, very harsh. You know, they talk directly at you. They talk at you. They don't talk to you. They they're not submitted to nobody. Their demeanor comes off as hard. Male and female. I've seen a lot of female apostles that very harsh and stern that's not of god people that's not the love of god i've seen prophets just because they're prophetic but their attitude is pathetic we cannot be that way people of god this is why the one-on-one -on -one with the prophets is so needed because simple fact is prophets need to learn from one another not just the anointing but the characteristics of god the characteristics of christ Exactly. They be little people in front of people. They try to make like their anointing is high because, you know, they're well educated in certain areas, but they don't got no power. They don't have no love. And this is the reason why it's hard for people to follow them. And that the people that do follow them, they oppress and they depress because they're dealing with a, con uh, a, a controlling spirit that's over them. The woman of God say they butched. Yeah, they butched. They walk like a man. They they carry themselves. Even when they dress like a woman, they still look like a man. Yes, it's a lesbian spirit. But you know, not just to, not just to get on the women of God, but the men. Same thing, gossiping, a messy spirit. The Holy Spirit had, uh, got on me recently. He said, "Look, get off the phone with people. Um, keep a peaceful ministry. Not don't get me wrong." There's certain things that we can't help that's going to be controversial. We have a controversy in ministry just by being Christians and just by being believers in Christ. Amen. Just by being believers in Christ, we're going to be controversial. However, we shouldn't look for controversy. We shouldn't make statements or try to do things to cause controversy. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't always, everything we do has some type of correction towards it or some type of drama towards it. We got to be peaceful with all men, the Bible says, as much as we can. Now, I ain't saying we got to, you know, be everybody's friend. We ain't got to be Joe Osteen. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is sometimes we got to learn to be peaceful even though we're apostles and prophets, yes, those are controversial offices, but there, but there is a certain demeanor that we must carry that doesn't attract that spirit of drama. Amen. Um, I just recently posted some with, with, you know, my belief system about the candidate I'm believing for, and it caused a lot of controversy, but even in the midst of the controversy, every person that addressed their rebuttal, I did my best 
uh, uh, to respect their rebuttal and still say, thank you for your comment. I appreciate that. I appreciate you for your thoughts. Amen. So we got to learn how to have healthy confrontation. We got to learn how to have healthy, healthy confrontation without it being confrontational. Amen. We shouldn't have to every day be getting into it with people. Every day there's a problem. Every day there's some type of issue. That's not of God. Even Jesus had a break from that. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, Prophet West. But you know, the thing is, is this. Politics shouldn't have us beefing as Christians. Okay, you vote for Hillary. Okay, I vote for Trump. What's the big deal? Those are earthly matters. We shouldn't be getting upset with one another because one have a different viewpoint about, because guess I'll be honest with you, as politicians, they have to be worldly. This is not about a contest of who is more holy than the other one. This is just a viewpoint of who you think can get the job done better. But we shouldn't let that divide us as a country. We shouldn't let that divide us as a nation. We shouldn't let that divide us as Christians. Amen. That's a spirit of division. Exactly. So, you know, it don't have to be confrontation. I saw some people on here, you know, I mean, they were looking for me to say something wrong. They were looking for me to miss a dot on my eye and, and miss a cross on my T's. They were looking for drama. Some people have that spirit. They look for error. So they can be the one to seem smart by correcting it. That is a spirit. That's a controversial spirit. That's a spirit. That's a, that's a spirit of error. They love to look for drama. They love to look for something wrong. They ain't have not one happy day in their life. If it is happy, it's always ended in some type of controversy or debate. A debatable spirit. I know I know people who sit up there and watch my scopes and watch me get on things and they look for anything I say wrong and then try to correct me in their stuff. Even some of my sons and daughters do that. <laughs> they'll watch, but they'll take my doctrine and if they find something that they don't think is right, they'll turn around. And and, 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 and and do a scope on it and kind of throw subliminal messages with me in it. That's crazy. That's a spirit that loves controversy. You got to be careful of that. We cannot be that. It's a Pharisee spirit. Exactly. As a pharisaical spirit, it's always looking to pick something, trying to correct someone in certain things. We got to be careful. It's a Pharisee spirit. So, we got to learn, people of God, to stop letting certain things that's not of God get to us. Certain things just don't need to be said. Certain things just don't need to be addressed. You ain't got to pick a fight with everybody. We got to learn to collaborate and connect and be in unity, even if we don't fully agree. Even if we don't fully agree. You know, so even if I don't agree with some of my people, I'm not going to sit up there and look for error. We are all human. We all make mistakes, but you don't have to be right all the time. Hallelujah. You don't have to be right all the time. Sometimes, sometimes you're going to be wrong, even if you think you're right, because your revelation today can be a can be a false doctrine tomorrow. Ah, uh, your your revelation today, once ex once your revelation today once excelled, can be a old rhema of yesterday, or to another person it can seem false. Cause we're always ever growing and ever knowing things. So do not think because you have knowledge or foreknowledge today that that's going to take you into the next level tomorrow. Because tomorrow that might be dinosaur talk to the next generation. So stop trying to be a know-it-all. I hate a know-it-all. Always trying to correct things. Always trying to correct people. That is a Pharisee spirit, even if you're right. Even if you're right. That's a Pharisee spirit. 
You don't have to check everybody. You don't have to correct. I had that bad habit. Had to correct people all the time. That is a spirit. But I guarantee you that same person, when you correct them, they run. They expect you to listen to them without rebuttal. With, with, without debate. But if you correct them, they're ready to run. Oh, my season up over here. I don't think God, I don't think God is saying that. I don't think God, you know, mm -mm. God's telling me to go somewhere else. You know, I, I tried it, but it didn't work. No, that's a spirit of error. That's it. That's a Pharisee spirit. That's a spirit that doesn't like correction. Be careful. It loves to, a person that loves to correct. Don't like to be corrected. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. A person that always loves to correct people. Don't like to be corrected themselves. Mm -mm. They don't like that because they used to being in a position of the correction, doing the correcting. So we got to be very mindful of those spirits. Trust me, I used to be that same person. When I first started off, I was the rebuking prophet. I had to rebuke everybody for every little thing. I had to correct the body of Christ. I had to make sure these pastors get in order, get these leaders in order. I wasn't even in order. I was going against my leader, but telling other people they need to, as leaders, what they need to do. And I wasn't even doing right by my leader. Come on now, people of God. We, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't preach one thing, but live something else. You know, I had to ask God yesterday. I had to ask God the other day, Lord, I repent. If I said anything about another man of God, and I just recently had a dispute with a man of God on, on, on Facebook and I had to repent. Me and my wife, we was praying. I like, Lord, I'm, I repent because even though that brother don't know, you know what I'm saying? I had to repent. And I saw myself talking about the dude the whole day and constantly talking. I said, you know what? It's not even worth talking about. That's a gossiping spirit. And I had to ask God to please forgive me. So I said, Lord, I'm not going to be on phones. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to cut Facebook off. I'm only going to come here when I'm led to say something. But other than that, I'm not going to be caught up into people's controversy and what they say about me or what they say about others. I care less. It's not adding to me. It's not putting no money in my pocket. It's not adding to my spirit, man. So certain battles we don't need to fight. There's certain things we just don't have to fight. Sometimes we got to learn to just be peaceful. Amen. You know, the Bible speaks about that, that the guarding ourselves in the area with, the, you know, with the, with, 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 with the shoes of peace. You know, we got to have peace in our life, people of God. You know, we ain't got to, the reason why we take upon warfare, because we always calling it upon ourselves. Of course, if you swing at people, they're going to swing back. <laughs> and it's staying in leaves one where you, yeah, you got to learn from it. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in correcting. I believe in rebuking. I believe in chastisement. But every day. Every day. I mean, every day? No, that's a spirit. Somewhere that's error. There's somewhere that's a controlling spirit. You don't have to rebuke people every day. You don't have to correct everybody every day. Where's the love? Where's the characteristics of God? Yeah, you got to choose your battles. You got to pick them wisely. You got to watch, you know, you, you know, a, a soft word would turn away rap. You know, there's a lot of these people who scream out, oh yeah, you know, because, you know, we got to show love. We got to show love. But they say it with a rough spirit. No. Love come also with gentleness, meekness, kindness, not false meekness, not false kindness, real gentleness. Some people have a strong demeanor about themselves. That's a spirit. I ain't saying you got to be soft like whoopee cushion. I ain't saying you got to be, you know, you know, I don't want to say the word. Uh, but we there's certain gentleness, demeanor should come with your character as a believer in Christ. I ain't saying you got to be lollipops and, you know, sugar plum fairies. However, there should be a soft demeanor or meekness to your character if you have the fullness of joy in Christ. 
With loving and kindness have I won thee. Not roughness and arrogance. No. Being rough towards people are always trying to seem like you have the, the measure of rule among all rulers. Even if you do, our ruler was a gentle ruler. Jesus was a gentle ruler. God so loved, he gave. Gave came with sacrifice. Our ruler was so gentle that where he, he, he lowered himself down to our standards to die for us. Yes, it must be a soft demeanor. Yes, I understand when we're, when we're, when we're, when we're, uh, when we're releasing power, of course, there's a, there's a strength or a boldness that come upon us, but boldness doesn't mean arrogant. Boldness doesn't mean rough. You can be bold and not rough. You can be bold and not be so abrupt. That's just your character flaw. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So yes, you can be rough. Yes, Jesus whipped people out of the temple. Yes, Jesus rebuked people. Yes, he did. But he also said, turn out a cheek. He also told Peter, don't, you know, at the chapter man here, don't do this. Why? He didn't want to be confrontational. But he had to. Don't kill the people. You know what I'm saying? Because the people already beat down. You don't have to beat them more with your King Henry VIII mentality. You know? Like you about to chop people head off because you're so rough. You know, I I prom I I thrived off because I was under those type of rulers. I was under those type of leaders. And I say I wasn't gonna be that way with my people. Yes, you guys, my people, they didn't some of them on here. When I first started off, I was rough towards my people. And that's why a lot of them ran off. And I was left with only five members. Yeah. I'm speaking from experience. I left her on five members. You thinking you doing something? Yes. You they may love you as the prophet, but they will not follow you as uh, as as a leader. They'll only stick around because of your anointing, but not because they like you. Oh my God. They'll stick around because of your anointing, not because they like you. They'll stick around because you have you you have wisdom beyond measure, but they do not like you. Amen. This is the reason why you can't duplicate yourself in them because the fact is their character is not like yours. <laughs> but only the strong survive. Exactly, Rhonda. Rhonda was one of those people around that time. I was rough. But as time went on, I became softer. I became more gentle towards my people. I couldn't correct them for every little thing. They had to learn on their own how to, how to deal with certain things. You know, my wife was rough like that too. Prophetess. You know? So, bless you too. Bless you too, Miss Freedom. Bless you too, woman of God. So, leaders, we got to learn. We got to learn to come down. Prophets, you can be strong and not be and not be arrogant. You can be strong and bold and not be so abrupt and rough with people. There's ways See, you can be speaking the truth, but if your delivery is off, people are not going to receive you. This is the reason why you got to have favor with God and with man. Yes, you may be stone right. You, your teaching might be off the chain. It might came from the throne room of heaven. But if your demeanor is off and your deliverance is off and you're not approachable or you're not gentle, you will not win a soul. You'll release a revelation, but you won't win a soul. You'll, you'll, re you'll release a revelation. You may even release an impartation, but you're not going to win that person's soul over. I'm speaking from experience. I'm not here talking about nobody. So if y'all, if some of this stuff is hitting y'all, I'm not, I did not do this towards nobody. I did not make this this for nobody. I'm not pointing fingers at nobody, but I'm speaking from experience to help leaders and to help other prophets and apostles. Men of God, we got to stop being the way we are. Just because we, we hold a position of authority, that don't mean we got to be authoritative all the time. Just because you hold a position of authority, that don't mean you have to be authoritative all the time. That don't mean you got to walk around and be 
uh, 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 you know, um, the grand apostle of all apostles and the major prophet of all prophets without no sense of humor. That's why I thank God for my spiritual father. Me and him, me and him can laugh and joke with one another and have jokes and laugh without me feeling on eggshells. Amen. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people, some students, they need that strong hand because some of them just, let's be honest with you, some people are just a little uh, loose in their brain. Amen. How you doing, Prophet is Rachel? Hallelujah. So, you know, we have to learn how to be able to deliver correctly. And this is the reason why most of us are still stuck in the Chitlin circuit or still stuck in local assemblies because God cannot bring you to a major platform because certain cultures cannot take that demeanor. Me being an African-American male and being an African-American minister, I had to learn to change my demeanor to fit different crowds. Because every crowd does not accept that strong, abrupt demeanor. Amen? So you got to learn to adjust where you're going. So if you're dealing with certain groups that, that's used to that type of demeanor, you're going to only remain in that type of group. Amen? So let us change the way we act. Let us change the way we think. Let's collaborate as prophets and apostles together. Let us learn to join together in forces with love and kindness. We scream love, but I don't think many of us know the definition of love. You know, a lot of our love come with conditions. You know, you can't say you have love, but you're not gentle. You're not meek with your love. Your love is rough and, ru and rugged. You know, ghetto love. <laughs> we used to call it graveyard love. You know, so your love got to come with some form of, it, it must stem with the other fruits. Peace, gentleness, kindness, meekness. All these things must say faithfulness. You can't say you love your pastor or your leader, but you're not faithful to them. You're only faithful to what they can release to you. You're only faithful to receive. You're only faithful to the extent of what they give you. And when they stop giving it, can you be faithful to your leader in a dry season? I want to ask some of y'all that. Can you be faithful to your prophet or your apostle when they're not releasing something to you? Or when they haven't talked to you in a long time? Or when they haven't called your phone? Can you still be faithful? Faithful don't come with conditions. Can you be faithful to that leader even if they don't talk to you every day? Can you be faithful to that leader if they pull back from you because they saw something in you? Can you be faithful to that leader? Or will you just hop around from church to church, ministry to ministry, this person, that whoever, whoever is the hot, hot prophet at this moment, that's the one you're going to roll with. Can you be faithful? Or are you just going to just jump from person to person, whoever feeds your ego, whoever feeds your frenzy of what you believe that you need? You can't tell a teacher how to teach you. Amen. A lot of y'all students, y'all think y'all need this. I needed somebody that can do this for me. And I need a I need a prophet or apostle that can pour into me like this. And this and you don't tell a leader how to lead you. Certain things be tests. Jesus used to lead. Imagine this. You're in a congregation of 12. And your leader only picked three people to come in and, and give certain revelation to. And you stuck with the other nine. Will you leave? <laughs> that's what the, the other disciples had to endure. Will you leave? Will you leave when he only take three of y'all and the other nine of y'all is stuck right there? And he tell the other three, don't tell y'all what he released to them. Will you still stay? Or be the seven, just say you're in a congregation of 70. And your leader say something crazy, like eat my flesh and drink of my blood. Will you leave? Will you leave? 
When the 70 loved Jesus, he turned to the 12 and said, what y'all going to do? Y'all going to leave too? Oh, no, Lord, you have the words of eternal life. He said, oh, yeah, I did choose you. See, that's the key. When your leader choose you, you're not going to run like the 70. Because, see, the 70 choose him, but, the, but he choose the 12. That's why you don't supposed to pick your leader. Your leader supposed to pick you. Because if you pick your leader, soon as your leader, soon as your leader do something that you don't like, you gone. You're going to leave like the 70 left. But when your leader pick you, you're going to remain like the 12. And even their loyalty was questionable. How are you going to feel when your leader... It's nine of y'all. It's 12 of y'all. But he only take three of y'all to reveal revelation to. Will you as the nine that's standing there left, will you remain? You got to have the fruits of faithfulness. You got to have the fruits of faithfulness. Nobody is faithful to nobody. Sometimes I test my sons and daughters. I say certain things to get under their skin to test their loyalty. To test their faithfulness. To test them, to see if they're gonna really stay. Not that I'm doing I, I'm doing it on purpose to test their faithfulness. I want to see if this is gonna get under their skin. I want to see if this is gonna because Jesus was not only testing the three, but he was also testing the nine. When he allowed the three to come with him. He was showing them transformation of his transformation. And he said, keep this secret from the others. Will you still keep that secret that the Lord told you away from the others? That's why when I have the school of supernatural, I tell my sons and daughters or the ones who follow our ministry. I say, look, this is only for y'all. Don't tell this to the rest of the public. That's the fruits of faithfulness. That's the fruits of loyalty. Can you be with your leader even when? Can you be there with your leader when the ministry has an attack? Can you be with your when 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 the people was coming against me about the Donald Trump stuff and all that, and I, I put up the post, I was looking for my people. <laughs> I was looking for my people to respond. Ah, short up Omo. I was looking, but I didn't say nothing. I was looking to see who was going to respond and who wasn't going to respond. Who's going to come to my defense and who wasn't going to come to my defense. Even though some didn't come to my defense, I still love them anyway. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. See, loyalty get tests on so many occasions we got to be careful of how many times we're passing the test. Loyalty, honor, faithfulness, the same things that most of us preach. We got to be careful that we're, we, we are not the ones moving in error in it. My Rosha. So this is why we need one-on-one -on -one with the prophets. This is why we need collaboration with leaders and followers. This is the reason why their leaders need to come together because our demeanors need to change. Our attitudes need to change. The way we release things need to change. Our faithfulness need to change. You're like you're faithful to your spouse. You got to be faithful to your leader because you made covenant with them when you decide to come under their ministry. You don't change mamas. You don't change your mother and father. I don't care how big you grow in the spirit, you don't change parents. Ah, my sure That's the problem. Where's your spiritual lineage? No one can really find where you're from. Amen. So let's learn how to be great sons and daughters to earthly leaders, not just God Himself. It's easy. Oh my God. It's it's more easy to follow God with all your love and your honor because 
you have you're dealing with an invisible force that you barely talk to that rebukes you. Yes, he's in conviction, but if you don't get that daily rebuke on a daily basis, you don't get that look of him shaking his head when you're doing something that's out of order. You don't get that spank on a hand all the time. That's why you get away with your flesh so much. Because if you did get that from God on a daily basis, you would probably reject him as a leader too. You would reject him as God. Oh my God. But that's why we as the early leaders get the flack. Because we're telling you what he's saying to you. I don't care how much you have grown in wisdom. I don't care how much you have grown in revelation. Yes, we all need to be corrected. Everybody, there is, there is, there is chains and commands in the spiritual realm. But again, pick your battles, pick your fight of what you need to say and what you shouldn't have to say. Amen. So I love everybody here. I want y'all to come to the one-on-one -on -one with the prophets, December the 9th through the 11th. December 10th is my birthday. So I'm going to be celebrating my birthday at the meeting. Amen. I'm spending my birthday soaking up revelation and impartation. Amen. So December 9th through 11th. Hallelujah. Exactly. You ain't too big to be corrected. Bypass his leaders still disrespect. Exactly. So come December the 10th, December the 9th through the 11th, I'm sorry, um, 6300 West Park Drive, Houston, Texas, zip code 7705. Thank you, Linda, for putting that up there. That's my daughter, Linda, my other daughter, Amanda Upchurch, my pastor, Jim. How you doing? Look like some of my sons and daughters are popping up. I'm glad. I'm glad. I love y'all. I love y'all. So let's learn to be here with one another. Let us learn to collaborate. You needed this correction? Exactly. God, I'm glad that you receiving it. And see, and see, it's the right kind of correction with the right type of deliverance and spirit behind it will turn, will, will get that person converted versus you being abrupt, strong, and, and, and very disrespectful. We got to be careful how we talk to people because we're still dealing with grown men and grown women. Amen. So even though I may be a, an authority over you, I don't got to talk to you, talk down to you like you're a little child. Even if you're my spiritual son or daughter. I don't talk to, you don't talk to people in that demeanor. You don't talk to people in that way. Now, some people, they just, you know, it is what it is. But us as leaders, we have to work on our character. I used to be that leader. I used to talk to people rough, no gentleness, no kindness in my voice, no meekness whatsoever. And that's the reason why I ended up with only three people in the ministry, four people in the ministry. We think that's power and strength, but all the while, that's, that's stupidity. That's arrogance. That's not the fruits of the spirit. You running people out with loving kindness have I one day. Love and kindness. Now, I ain't saying that you got to be Mr. Rogers neighborhood. I ain't saying, you, yes, please. Could you please listen to me? No, you ain't got to do all that. However, people can tell the spirit behind your words. Even they can tell, even if you've, you've, if they can tell, even if you have a false humility, people ain't stupid. People know that you crazy and jacked up. People know that you have a strong demeanor. But apostles, prophets, we need to work on our character. One of the fruits of the apostle is patience. Some of these apostles, I ain't got time for this. Soon as somebody don't listen, to, I ain't got time for that. That's not apostolic. It's apple. It's just not stolic enough. You're an apostle, but you ain't got time for nothing. That's not patience. That's one of the fruits that goes with the apostolic. So we got to learn to be patient with people. We got to learn to be kind. We got to be, I'm telling you, I just recently had to repent. I said, Lord, some people came against me, whatever. 
And I jumped in the flesh and started talking about these people for like four days straight. I had to repent. My wife was like, uh-uh, you don't need to be on the phone talking about this. That's not of God. And I took that gentle rebuke from my wife. It's the truth. I shouldn't, even though that person might have been thrown off, that's not of God for us to be talking about people. So I said, I'm not going to get on the phone and talk about nothing negative. If it ain't something positive, I don't want to talk about it. Mama used to tell me, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. You know, uh, we, again, before we can correct others, we must first correct ourselves. We must first correct ourselves. We must do an inventory on self first before we can sit up here and, and try to bring correction to the body of Christ. We got to change the way we think. We got to change the way we act. And I'm talking from experience. I'm speaking. I, I'm, I'm speaking guilt right here. From I used to be the guilty one. I was that person. So the Holy Spirit convicted me. Amen. So if I have said anything about anybody on Facebook or we have words with people on Facebook that didn't agree with me or didn't agree with my doctrine or didn't agree with anything that I said or I said something that they didn't agree with, I apologize. I'm sorry. I really am. From the bottom of my heart, I'm sorry. So if I, if, 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 if you don't accept my apology, I pray that you find in your heart to forgive me and I forgive you. I forgive you if you say something about me. I know sometimes we just have misunderstandings and we don't understand each other. But I believe if we learn how to deliver things correctly and learn how to talk, we can have healthy uh, disagreements without it turning into escalating into arguments and, 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 and craziness and picking sides and all this crazy stuff and starting clicks and all that. That's not God. That's how denominations started. Amen. So we're trying to get away from all that. Amen. That's not the characteristics of God. That's not the love of God. Again, we might well like each other now because we're going we're gonna to be with each other forever in heaven. That's if you make it because I'm going. I don't know about y'all. I'm going. But the thing is, is we got to learn to get along. All this false love, this false humility, this false honor, this false faithfulness, you know, you praising your leader in one minute, then you on other people's pages praising them too. Nothing wrong with giving honor what honor is due, but come on now. Where's your faithfulness? Where's your honor towards, towards your leader? I'm just being honest. Nothing wrong with, you know, looking at other people's stuff, whatever. But come on now, if you're giving other prophets props more than your, your own mom and dad, something wrong with that. I'm just saying. That's like you married to your wife, but you go to another woman's house and be like, ooh, you you showed not a cook good. I like the way you dress. My wife will kill me. That sounds crazy. Why would I go to somebody else's wife or someone else's house and give her props and honor, but don't even give my own wife? Don't tell her, don't tell my own wife how beautiful she is every day. Come on now, that's crazy. No honor. No honor. No, 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 no faithfulness to no one. Amen. Exactly. Never honor another man or woman of God more than your own leader. Because, you know, that's like, you know, it, nothing wrong with getting a fast, nothing wrong with getting, uh, nothing wrong with going, going outside and getting a Whataburger. Nothing wrong with going to a fast food restaurant, but nothing like a home cooked meal from mom's. Amen. Nothing, you know, because it's showing your faithfulness. And that's the reason why people are not faithful to your ministry because you ain't faithful to your leader. People are not going to be faithful to you because you ain't, you ain't faithful in your tithing and you're giving your offerings. You're not faithful in showing up to meetings. You're not faithful in this or that. You, you know, you waiting for the first exit. As soon as you get what you need to get, you waiting for the first exit out. As soon as you can get what you have to come to get. That's not faithfulness, people of God. We got to learn to stop that buffoonery. That's craziness. Amen? And then we wonder why things in our own personal lives, you know, our people ready to kite out on us or ready to go to other leaders or other prophets. You know? So, and your people be faithful without you having to control them. That's real faithfulness. Without the threat of you trying to 
you know, disbar them or dis, you know, banish them to the ends of the earth. But they being faithful because they love you, not because you controlling them. Not because you, 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 you indoctrinated them with this, but because they love you and that's why they're faithful to you. Not because you indoctrinated them with, you better not talk to other leaders. That's control. That's not real love. That's not real faithfulness. They're going to be faithful regardless. My wife don't have to tell me, you better be faithful. That's an automatic. It has to be. She don't got to indoctrinate with me, me with that. I know that's what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway, we got to learn to get along. Apostles, prophets, leaders, let's come together. Let's do something powerful. One-on-one -on -one with the prophets coming in December, Houston, Texas, 2017. SMI Ministries is taking over by force and by fire. Connect. Connect so you can collect. We're taking it by force. By, I can't tell y'all all what's about to happen, but we're taking over for 2017. Uh, you know, I'm saying that in confidence, not cockiness. 2017, we taking the world by storm for Jesus Christ, by force <laughs> and by fire. Amen. So connect, join, connect, collaborate. Let's do some, those who have their own ministries, let's collaborate. Let's connect. Let, let, let's do something together for the kingdom. Amen. Praise God. Well, you know, I love all y'all. I, I bless all y'all to all my SMI family members and team. I love y'all. Y'all are the best. Y'all are the best people I know. I thank y'all for allowing me to pour into y'all lives. Uh, uh, bless all my sons and daughters. Um, and their ministries, I know they're about to take over. My sons and daughters' ministries are about to take over by force and by fire. Um, so I know that some great things are about to happen in their ministries. You know, uh, the Up Church, the Blairs, uh, the Rumble Bowl, uh, Tara and Jim, their ministry is about to take it over. I mean, look out for these ministries that's coming from the SMI branch. You know, Linda Wong and her ministry. Uh, everybody, just just get ready because they coming. <laughs> Mama Blue, amen. Prophetess Rhonda, you know, uh, Elva, her ministry. Everybody, let me tell you something. Never undermine small beginnings. See, the people that's about to come out, that's, that's about to do it in this next move of the spirit is going to be people you never heard of. It's going to be people you never heard of. They're just coming out of the woods. I mean, raising the dead, clearing out hospitals. I'm talking about some, some supernatural stuff. I ain't, I ain't just talking about the move of the spirit like during the A.A. Allen days. I'm talking about some, they, I mean, I'm changing weather patterns. Some of them might start flying out here, praise the Lord. You know, translating back and forth in the spirit. And I ain't talking about through no demonic channel. I'm talking about through the Holy Ghost. Amen. So y'all better get ready. These people coming and they're taking it by force and they're taking it by fire. So collaborate. I'm not saying we the best out there, but we're one of the best. Amen. So connect where connect where you can collect. Connect where you can really see a real move of the spirit, a real move of God. Amen. And again, we need to love more than anything. Our love must come with gentleness. It must come with kindness. It must come with meekness and it must have peace behind it. Not drama, not controversy and certain controversies. We it just, we just can't help it because we're believers, but we shouldn't be looking for drama. We shouldn't be looking for certain things. Amen. Certain things we shouldn't try to just purposely do. Amen. So become a part of the movement. I love y'all. I mean, I, I don't want to leave, but I, I have to go. I love y'all. Uh, I thank y'all for the hearts. Thank you for the thumbs. Love you too, Rhonda. Love you so much. Rhonda, Rhonda been sticking in with us for some years now. We bless her. Even through our ups and downs, she remained faithful. That's one thing I can say. You know, I can, I can speak on this because we've been through it. 
me and Rhonda and, and Rhonda came to our ministry. She, we had some up and downs. We didn't kicked out about a million times. And she came back a million times too. But at the end of the day, you know, she remained faithful, you know, in spite of our differences and everything, she remained faithful. I can speak on it. Saying that one mama blue. I kick, we kicked my mother-in-law out too. Cause she was acting crazy, but you know, I love them to death. Now she's faithful to the ministry and you know, this is my people's faithful people. Not saying they're going to always be right, but they faithful in spite of their they family, regardless, that's the people you need to be around. They don't got to be perfect people, but they faithful. They faithful. So this is what we're looking for at the SMI family, people that's going to be faithful, who's going to endure to the end. Amen. Not just soon as they get a little platform, pew, they gone like the wind. Amen. So we love y'all. We bless y'all. I love the SMI family. I love all y'all. I, I pray the best for everybody, every prophet and apostle. I pray that y'all ministries grow. I pray that God use y'all in a powerful way. That God begin to send the, the right sons and daughters that are going to be faithful to your ministry as well as you be faithful to your leaders. Amen. So we bless you in the Holy Ghost. We love you. Please share this with people on your page. Please share this. Uh, 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 to, to, to your neighbors, inbox this to people. So this, this, you know, get, get part of the wave, become a part of the wave, become a part of the movement. Amen. So we bless y'all. Me and Providence bless y'all. She's somewhere around here. I got to go look for her, but we love y'all in, in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember one-on-one -on -one with the prophets, December the 9th through the 11th, Houston, Texas. Y'all need to be there. Amen. Praise God. We love you. I'll see you again. General out.